Hello everyone, and welcome to a small standalone video we're doing on Dispatch Work Item. Now, Dispatch Work Item is part of the Dispatch Framework or Grand Central Dispatch in Swift, and it's really just kind of a wrapper around a block that you would normally execute on Dispatch, uh, you know, Grand Central Dispatch. So, for example, if you were doing standard code where you would say dispatch after, uh, and then you'd pass this block. Well, instead of passing that block, you would just pass a dispatch work item. And the API is essentially the same. The only difference is that dispatch work item gives you some additional flexibility in how you can control that block that you pass off to the queue. So I'm just going to kind of show you what the, um, the interface is. It's pretty straightforward. Essentially, if you create one, you just pass a block like you normally would in you know standard uh, dispatch stuff. Um, then there's a bunch of different functions you have. So you can actually just perform the work item or really the block of code immediately if you so choose. You can wait on the block of code to execute. For, so for example, let's say you dispatched some code to a different queue and you want to wait for that execution to finish, then you could say dispatch this thing to a different queue and then you just say wait on the current queue that you're on and it will wait on that thread or whatever uh, current execution to wait until the, the work is done on that different queue. Uh, you can specify a wait with a timeout so if you uh, want to make sure you eventually continue your operation right because wait is going to block you on the current thread that you're on then if you want to ever continue that work you can say uh, wait with a given timeout so that you can eventually uh, continue regardless. There's a notify API which allows you to say I want to schedule a block of code to execute once the current work item has been cancelled or completes. So basically if it cancels or it completes it's, it's still going to call this notify and the neat thing about this is that you can actually specify a queue that you want this block to execute on. So your first dispatch work item could say execute on the main thread and then you could specify that the next item uh, so we'd say dot notify and then say this is going to execute on a background queue for example and uh, you can just kind of specify it all uh, sort of a little bit declaratively instead of having a bunch of callbacks that you know kind of give you the the indentation uh, ladder kind of effect uh, the last very important thing, which is what we're kind of going to be focusing on mostly today, is the ability that you can cancel these work items. So you can actually just say cancel, and if the work item has not been executed yet, then it will not execute that item. So that's kind of a cool functionality that you get with it, and I mostly just want to focus on that in this particular tutorial by showing two different examples uh, of how you could use this in your own application. So I've gone ahead and created a little bit of setup here. So there's this animate function for uh, a button action. And there's also this uh, search field that's wired up through the NS search field delegate. So I have a search field and the app delegate is the NS search field delegate. Uh, and it's wired up so that I have control text uh, did change implemented here. So I just want to show you what uh, both of these are in the nib as well. So there's, again, just a button. The action is wired up to the animate call. And there's a search field that is wired up uh, connecting the search fields delegate to our app delegate. All right, if I go ahead and run this, I'm just going to show you what the two things do. There's really not too much magic here. If I click this button, there's going to be an animation that occurs. So I can, you know, click that as many times as I want. But it's really just a keyframe animation that we're adding to uh, the layer on the button. So um, you can feel free to read this code in your own time, but um, it's just standard animations that you're adding to a CA layer. The uh, search field, if I start typing in uh, Sally, for example, you can see that every change of text, I'm going to get a new character printed out here. All right, the first case that I want to do is I want to do an example where, let's say that click me button that we were just looking at, I want the user to click on this and I want them to click on it so badly that if they don't click on it within the first five seconds of launching it I want to animate the button myself and if they do click on it however I don't want to animate it a second time right so I actually want to cancel any scheduled you know animation in the future so to do that we can just make our own little work item here and we'll use dispatch work item 
And in here, we're going to simply get a reference to ourself here. And we want to call animate with the button uh, that we have a reference to here. All right, now I need a basically a reference on this class to hold on to this work item for me. So uh, I'm going to call this the um, say private r animate work item, and it is an optional. So what, what we're going to do here is I'm going to assign our work item that we just created to our little property there. And then I'm going to go ahead and schedule this on the main queue. So I will schedule this after uh, we've waited for five seconds. And I'm going to schedule that work item. So uh, now what we want to do is make sure that when we call this animate function, we are going to cancel the animate work item. So we'll call cancel. And I'm also going to nil it out as well. Because I don't want to hold on the reference to it after I've already uh, basically canceled it or used it once. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and test out this code. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, and the expectation would be that if I wait here five seconds, the click me button is going to go ahead and execute itself. So there we go. We just saw it animate, and that was because we scheduled this to occur five seconds after our application did finish launching. However, if I go ahead and run this again and I click the button first now if I wait here five seconds nothing's going to happen because I already canceled that animate work item right in my animate code I initiated the cancel on the work item and then I milled it out right so as long as I call cancel on the work item it's not going to execute was it whatever was in here right so I'm not going to get that animate call after five seconds all right, let's do a similar thing for our search field. So uh, searching is a kind of common case where sometimes you don't, um, you know, let's say you have a, a large database or even worse, you have basically a network request that you need to send off, right? So if I'm sending some kind of results to uh, a server and I don't want, you know, as I'm typing every single character to send something to um, the server. So if they want to kind of limit, uh, sometimes known as throttling uh, or bouncing basically, where I, I don't necessarily want to send all the information at once to the server. I want to wait until the user has stopped typing for just a little bit of time and then I'll send the results. So to do this, we'll go ahead and create another work item. We'll call it the search work item. And what I want to do here is basically if I have started to type new text, I want to stop that work item. So I'm going to cancel that work item. And then we'll start a different one. So um, we'll call this request dispatch work item. And here I'm just going to throw in my print call. And this will uh, execute after a given amount of time. So what we're going to do here is we're going to assign our new work item with this request and I'm going to send this off on main and it's going to uh, it, it's going to actually execute this work item oops, dot now after let's just say a quarter of a second and so after a quarter of a second we will execute our request right so you could imagine that this work item here would be something more you know complicated than just printing out uh, some text but let's say there was some kind of network call that we wanted to limit, right? Now we've actually limited the amount of requests that we're gonna make in this scenario. So let's go ahead and run this again. And we can see that if I type slowly enough, I will get uh, some new results, right? But you can see that if I type really fast, right? That's not what I meant to type. We can see that uh, we can actually get uh, we can go basically from no results to full results, right? So let me try that again where I haven't typed anything. Now I type a full name quickly enough and we can see that I'm only ever executing this request one time, right? So this is just nice so that if the user is typing pretty slowly, right, they'll keep getting results, right? And 
they will get sort of the full results that they, they are typing at their pace. But if they type really fast and then they just want to get the results at the end, then that can also happen in this scenario as well. So anyway, that's uh, kind of how we can use the dispatch work item in our own code. The last thing I want to just demonstrate is uh, the effect of notify on this particular example. So if I wanted to execute some code after this request has been called, I'll just say uh, uh, it's a notify block. And I just want to show you the effect of the notify block just so it's clear on how that works. So what I've set up right is that every time this request finishes and finishes means it either executes or it gets canceled, the notify block will be called after that. So uh, for example, if I type slowly, right, we can see that I get uh, the notify block is called every time after our you know latest entry has been uh, requested. However, I'm just going to clear this out for a second. If I type this really fast, right, you'll see that I get a bunch of notify block calls for every time that I canceled that operation. But then I finally get my last request that actually goes through and it actually does complete. I didn't cancel that last request, but uh, the notify block indeed uh, finishes execution. So either canceling or executing will still call the notify block, which is kind of a good feature of this. It just guarantees that whatever you set up here, right, is going to be called one way or another as long as you indeed actually, uh, you know, send, <laughs> execute this request or at least uh, enqueue the request on a queue in one way or another. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you got something useful out of it that perhaps you can use in your own work. I'll see you guys next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.